Hello, in this video, I want to show you how you can use AI to generate 3D models for your game and then import them into Unreal Engine. So I actually found this cool 3D website. I actually got in contact with them. And as you can see in my Unreal Engine project, I've generated this dragon helmet, this chest, and this shield model, all with AI. And I did it completely for free. So I want to show you how you can do the same. So first, you want to head over to this website. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video, so make sure you check it out. And they have this AI called Rodin, which allows you to generate 3D models, and they have a bunch of settings. So I want to go over them. And there are many different ways which we can generate a 3D model. We can attach a reference image, and this model will basically generate a 3D model off of that image. So I'll show you what I mean. On my PC, I have an image of a frog, so let me just find it. And I can basically generate a 3D model just off this image. So I click the generate button and it's used that image to generate me a full 3D model. If I'm not happy with it, I can change a couple of settings. So if I go over here, if I wanted the model to have sharp edges, I could just click here. I can scroll with my mouse over here and I can change all of the different settings that I basically want this to have. And you get up to 10 free redos of your model. They gave me a business account, so I have 50. And if I'm not happy with the model, I can just check or uncheck any of the changes that I basically want here. And they also have this new beta feature which will be coming to the public soon called the 3D Control Net. If I click here, I'll be able to access this. We can also access this before we generate our 3D model. But basically, it gives us three options, bounding box, voxel, or point cloud. And we can basically use this to control the generation, scale, and shape of our model. So if I just go over to bounding box, and I'm just gonna go over to handcraft, and maybe I want this frog model to be a bit taller. So I can just play around with the height. So I'm just going to increase it. And maybe I want it to be a bit thicker. So I can increase the width here. And once I'm happy, I can just click confirm. And then I can just redo. And I'll basically redo my model with those dimensions that I set. So as you can see, it's a bit taller and a bit thicker. Maybe I want a version of the model where it's very short. So I can just adjust the height so it's kind of low. And I'll just change this back to be 100. And I'll change this back to 100. Although I've made the height a lot shorter, I can confirm that. And then let's redo this. And as we can see, it's made my model, although it's made a lot flatter, exactly like I wanted. Then once you're happy with your model, you can just go over to confirm. It'll let you know how many credits it'll cost you. And you can also decide how many polygons you want it to have. And they seem to have this option here called hyper. If you click this, it'll take more time to process the model although it provides finer processing for thin surfaces. But now I'm just going to leave this unchecked and just confirm my model, and I'll begin to generate it. Okay, once you've generated your model, if you're still not happy with it, they have this mesh editor tool where you can further define your model. So let's check it out. I can go over to mesh editor. And here you can sculpt and edit your model for further fine detail. Once you're happy with it, you can just go confirm. I'm not going to change anything for now. And then next, we want to generate a material for our model. So it's going to generate a material automatically based off our image. Before we um, generate a material for our model, there are two settings. So we have the PBR temperature. This will basically let the AI know how much detail you want to put into your um, model. And then the reference strength, this basically determines how similar the material it generates should be similar to the reference image. I'm just going to leave mine at the default settings. And this will also cost us one credit. And let's just go confirm. Okay, so it's generated me my um, texture. And again, we get a couple of redos. So let me just redo this with a slightly stronger reference strength. And I'll just play around with it. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Once you're happy, you can just click confirm. And then finally, we just need to export our model. So let's select what file format we want. For Unreal Engine, I normally import FPX models. And for the materials, PBR and 1K textures are fine for now. And we can just click download and this will package up our model and download it for us i can just exit this and if we just go to mine we can see some of the models that i've been basically um, playing around with so i generated this bear which was wearing some armor here i just generated a dragon um, helmet and then i got this second one I generated this um, chest and i also generated this shield so i've now got my model i just renamed it to frog and I'm just going to import it into my Unreal Engine project and just go import and I can just drag it in and now I'm just going to create a material for it 
So if I just select the diffuse, I can right click and go create material, open this up, and then let's drag in this metallic, it's normal, and it's roughness. And then just connect them to the corresponding pins. So here I'll connect roughness into roughness. I'll connect the normal into the normal. And I'll connect the metallic into the metallic. Then just go apply, close this. And I'll just rename this my frog underscore mat. And if I just open up the model, let's give this the frog underscore mat material. We can save this, close it. And just like that, I have a frog model in my project, which was generated completely with AI. Pretty cool. If I just go back to the main Rodan website, there are other ways we can edit and generate models. So I showed this bounding box, but they also have this voxel control. Here, if I already have a 3D model, I can basically use this as a reference. So I have this model of a chicken. And if I want to, I can kind of adjust its setting. And then you need to add an image texture for what you'd like this model to look like. And by doing this, you can basically kind of give Rodin more specific instructions about the scale of how you want your model to look like. I'll just go back. We can also do this with point cloud control. So you can import your model and then you can adjust it and then add an image. And basically Rodin will basically generate a model based off the model and the image that you give it. I'll just go back. If you don't have an image, Rodin can also generate images for you. So let me just show you that. Let's say I want to generate a model of a tiger wearing some armor. I can just type that in. So I'm just gonna type in bipedal tiger wearing armor. I'll click that and it's gonna generate me an image. If I'm not happy with the image, I can just click here and I'll regenerate me the image. And then once I'm happy with that, I can just click this button and it'll generate me a 3D model based off that image. So hopefully you find this tool helpful because I thought it was super cool. If you're making a game and you need some quick 3D models, I think this is great and it's only gonna get better and better. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.